Hello, good evening. Um, welcome to this Hills Road event um, on History of Art, our kind of virtual open evening. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself quickly and I'm going to go through the running order of what we're going to do this evening with you. Um, and then there's obviously going to be an opportunity to kind of ask lots of kind of questions also about the subject. So firstly, my name is Timothy Wynn. I'm the head of art and design at Hills Road Sixth Form College. So I kind of run the entire art department. So I oversee the art and photography levels, but I'm also in charge of the history of art as well. I'm the sole teacher for history of art. So if you choose that subject, then I'm the one that's going to be teaching you, basically. Um, so that's me. Um, I've also got with me a current year two student, Cassia. So Cassia, can you give us a, a quick Hello. Um, Cassia is also going to be kind of talking to you a little bit about the course later on after I've spoken. So again, just a little bit about the running order of what we're going to do this evening. Um, we've got about 45 minutes with you. I'm not going to talk for the entirety of that time. Um, I'm going to do maybe 20, 25 minutes. There's going to be also a little section that Cassie is going to do, and she's going to talk to you about what it's like to do art history at A level, um, what it's like being a bit of a, you know, a student at, at Six One College as well in the department. Um, and then there's obviously a really fantastic opportunity for you to ask any questions at all. And I, I do kind of encourage you to ask questions. Um, don't kind of feel shy in any way. And what we're going to do is that we can see the questions kind of posted up for us and we will, at the end of the session, kind of go through those questions and answer them as best we can. Um, this session has been recorded, so you can come back and watch it again um, and go back through things, but you won't be able to see the questions. But we, as I said, we'll be reading out the questions so you can kind of get the answers to them. Okay. Um, so... I'm just going to kind of change my slides over to the, this, actually no, I'm going to stay on this screen here just to explain a couple of things about history of art itself. Um, firstly, what I would say about history of art is that it's a very unique kind of subject. There's actually very few sixth form colleges in the country that offer an A-level in history of art. In fact, I think there's only three. I might be wrong, it might be four, but I think there's only three. And typically it tends to be taught in private schools. And even then, it's quite limited in terms of how many centres actually offer it. Um, there's usually about a thousand students that sit history of art every year. Therefore, it's a very unique subject. It's one that's quite rare in the kind of catalogue of A-level subjects that's offered. So it's a really fantastic opportunity to do something that you wouldn't get the opportunity to do elsewhere. And I think now we're the only centre in Cambridge that offer an A-level in history of art. Um, when I'm talking about history of art, I should say that it's also um, sculpture and architecture and not just kind of painting. So we're looking at all three of those subjects. And essentially, it's an opportunity for students to really develop their powers of visual analysis and understanding of the world around them. We live in a visual world, and this is a kind of real fantastic opportunity to get more out of the world around you. It's not just a subject for A-level, but I always like to say that it's a subject for life, as it were. So, um, moving on then, what does the course actually consist of? So, like all A-levels, it's split into two units, and quite conveniently, we look at Unit 1 in the first year and Unit 2 across the second year. I should state at this stage that the course is totally examined externally in terms of a written exam. There is no coursework for kind of history of art. This is quite common with a lot of subjects um, at this time, so coursework is something that's kind of not as common as it used to be. So as a result of that, one of the things that we're kind of very keen to do is to kind of push written skills, and particularly written skills, kind of under time conditions. Um, so the first part of the exam is, develop, is, is really divided, I should say, into kind of three key sections. The first section is what we would call visual analysis and interpretation. And the second and the third section, if you like, is divided into what we call themes in art history. And we look at the two themes of nature and war. There is an identity, but we don't choose to do that at this centre. So basically, there are kind of 
three parts. We call it A and B, but B split into two parts, if you like, as you can see on the slide there. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about each of those parts now, just to kind of unpack a little bit more information about what's contained in them. Um, so let's just talk about visual analysis first of all. So this is what we call section A in the exam. It's the first hour of the first exam for unit one. And this is really designed to test your skills in looking. And this gives you really the fundamental skills in being an art historian. Um, and when I say fundamental skills, it's really the skills to kind of look at something and take something apart and dissect it to increase your understanding of it. And of course, that's really what we mean when we're talking about analysis. Um, the beauty of this section of the course is, firstly, you get pictures in the exam. It's always nice to have pictures in the exam. You'll be given a painting, a piece of sculpture, and a piece of architecture. And the idea is, is not to talk about what you know about these, piece, those pieces of work, because chances are you'll never have seen them before um, in your life. They could be taken from, you know, any time in kind of any period in art history. Um, but the idea is, is to kind of test you on what you can see and what you can identify and most importantly what you can interpret from what you're seeing. So the whole first part of this course is designed to give you those skills. So we might kind of be analysing composition, we might be looking at light and tone, we might be looking at the idea of colour, we might be looking at figure and setting in sculpture, we might be looking at materials for example and they're kind of um, effect that they have on making the work, but also on the viewer reading the work as well. Within architecture, we'll be looking at some elements of engineering, we'll be looking at stylistic features, we look at form and function of a piece of architecture in order to kind of visually understand it more. Um, so the first few weeks, actually the first term of the course, is actually designed to give you those what we call fundamental skills of an art historian, the ability to look and see objectively using tools of what we call formal analysis to identify and understand further what you're seeing in front of you. It's also an opportunity to kind of grow your language in the subject as well. So subject terminology is obviously a really kind of important aspect of this and learning the, the, the language, if you like, of art historians, so you're better able to write and describe things as you kind of go through. So that's the kind of the first part of the exam. And it's also the first part of the course that we look at at this stage. And like I say, it's usually about a term's worth of work that we spend putting down those foundation skills so that by the time we get onto the second part of the course, you've got a really good grasp and understanding um, of looking, of talking and language to describe and to analyze the things that you see in front of you. Um, moving on then to the second part of Unit 1, or Section B, this is what we call themes, and we look at two key themes, and as I said, it's nature and the war, so you can see kind of a Turner painting there in the slide, the fighting Temenaire, which is one of the studies that we look at, in fact Turner is one of the key artists that we look at in this unit. Now, Section B is different to Section A in that what we're looking at here is a much more contextual understanding of a piece of artwork. So we're not just kind of looking at its formal components, that is what you can see in front of you, as if you were to walk into a gallery and see it there and make a judgment based on your kind of visual analysis, but rather we're bringing in contexts much more in this stage of the course. So what we're looking for here is an ability to kind of interweave, link, connect, if you like, an artist and their work to what's going on at the time. So that might be something to do with um, political elements. It might be something to do with socio-economic kind of elements. We're looking at what's inspired the artist, what's motivated the artist to kind of create the picture. Um, obviously, an element of the Industrial Revolution you can see in the painting in front of you, this kind of steamship towing this kind of old ship behind it. Um, in this magnificent painting. And so, you know, the Industrial Revolution is something that appears quite frequently in Turner's work. Um, so the idea of context is, is really important, obviously, in terms of understanding what an artist does and how they work. And this is tested in a short essay and a longer essay. So the idea is, is you have a, um, an A and a B question here. And what we're kind of looking to develop is your ability to create sound arguments, as it says on the slide there, and your kind of ability to produce 
discussion-based essays that are well substantiated from a series of given texts that we can provide um, and also a kind of element of of kind of your your knowledge that you're bringing from further wider reading as well. So the idea is, is we're moving away from kind of factual essay writing, we're moving away from just descriptive essay writing and actually teaching the tools of what we would call analytical kind of essay writing. So the idea being is that we are trying to teach you the skills of, of a good argument, of creating a good argument. And this is a real essential skill for A-level um, and certainly something that differentiates it perhaps from the kind of the GCSE way of working and way of writing or certainly pushes that much further. So as you can see there, nature and more are the kind of the key components that we kind of look at. Um, moving just briefly into kind of unit two, obviously unit two is something that we'll be doing in the second year of the course, but it's worth just mentioning what we do for this. Um, so I should mention also, obviously, with the, the kind of themes that I've just been talking about, nature's one and war's the other. And what that involves is a range of case studies from quite a, a variety of artists, a broad range of artists, um, I would say, um, that is really kind of trying to kind of cover um, a multitude of nationalities. It's not, you know, the, the example for our history is really trying to kind of push diversity in the exemplars that we can provide for you. Um, we look at a rich range of artists who work in a rich range of mediums as well. So we're not just looking at kind of the distant past, we're also looking at kind of very contemporary artists as well within the mix. As I say, for both nature and war, there'll be a series of about kind of 20, 25 case studies for each section that we'll be examining in relation to those topics. Um, that is also painting, sculpture and architecture in that part of the course also. Um, unit two or paper two, as you can see here, is worth 50% of the exam. Um, and this is an opportunity to go much more in depth into a particular era. And this is a really nice thing to do because it builds your understanding much deeper, particularly between kind of art and context. And as you can see, the first topic that we do, the first of two topics that we do for this so-called period study, is the late 19th century. So we're looking at the years 1848 to 1899, and this is called Rebellion Revival, the avant-garde in Britain and France. So we're looking specifically at British and French artists, and we're looking really at how artists start to kind of move away perhaps from more what we would call academic conventions of painting and start to produce work that is arguably more diverse, that is more controversial, that's looking into kind of more contemporary issues, issues that artists felt were far more relevant at this stage. And even when artists do tackle um, traditional subjects like the one you can see in front of you now, which is kind of Millet's Christ in the House of His Parents. Um, this is the kind of the young Christ place in his carpenter shop. Millet does it in a very fresh and modern way that was extremely controversial at the time because they were done with such realism, such kind of attention to detail, that this was seen as sacrilegious to actually paint Jesus with kind of dirty toenails, a bloodied hand. Um, the Saint Anne, who you can see in the background, has got swollen hands. The arms of Joseph, his father, are kind of sunburnt and actually has the muscle definition of a real carpenter who Millet observed. So even a, a more traditional subject can be seen as quite controversial. Um, Charles Dickens famously wrote about this painting saying that he was disgusted by it, essentially, um, and compared Mary as being like somebody who you might find in a gin shop. So there's a lot of kind of interesting things that come out of the 19th century in artists challenging conventions and moving forwards, hence why it's called rebellion. Um, and revival. Revival is more of reference to the revivalism of kind of classical and gothic styles, particularly in terms of architecture as well. So again, we're looking at sculpture, architecture and painting within these kind of particular um, eras. The second period study is called Brave New World and it's modernism in Europe and 1900 to 1939. And if you're Paying attention closely, you'll notice that the periods continue on, and I've deliberately chosen two periods that continue on from each other. So we're effectively looking at one block of time, effectively about 100 years in the second year, which allows students to get a much deeper kind of grasp of a period and to understand what we often refer to as a kind of synoptic kind of relationship between the art and context. 
This is essentially the modern period, both the 19th and the 20th century would be described as the modern period in art history. And as I've already mentioned, this is a time when artists start to get more diverse, more kind of individual, and are increasingly taking an interest in the world around them, which was changing rapidly um, at this particular time. And here you can see Picasso's Guernica in front of you, which is kind of responding to a specific event um, that happened in Spain regarding the bombing of a particular town during this time. But you can see how obviously Picasso invents or reinvents a kind of pictorial language to move away from any kind of traditional art and arguably to create something that's far more powerful as a result of that. So that's a kind of a little bit of embodiment of what we are studying over the two years of the course. Um, one of the things that's quite nice, in the first year, you're kind of skimming along a little bit more, looking at a more diverse range of artists. The second year is an opportunity to literally get stuck in and, and look at something a lot more kind of focused um, at this stage. So that's quite a, an interesting kind of contrast in terms of how we approach the course. And the idea is, is building skills the whole way through. Um, just looking to the next slide now, this asks, will there be any trips? And um, the answer under normal circumstances would be absolutely yes. This is something that the department thrives upon, not just in terms of art history, but in terms of the art as well. But particularly within the art history, we've used local resources quite a lot in the past. We are very richly resourced here in Cambridge. So we have the Fitzwilliam who've worked with us quite closely in the past. Um, who enjoy taking our students around the kind of galleries there and doing various workshops with them. We've been and visited the Tate Galleries, obviously in the past, the National Gallery, um, the Royal Academy, the Court of Institute have also been locations that we've utilised in the past. We also do one international trip over the two years, currently that is Paris. It um, serves us particularly well for the course and particularly the range of things that we're looking at. You can see a group of very happy looking students there, some in front of Notre Dame. Um, this was taken a couple of years ago, I think, but this is, again, a really fantastic opportunity to get out and see art firsthand. And I think that's where it kind of really comes alive as a subject. It's not just in the classroom, it's everywhere. And it's, it's something that starts to kind of happen quite quickly within the course, that students come in and they learn quite a bit, particularly with the architecture. And so they're out in Cambridge, seeing it there and being able to kind of recognize bits of architecture, being able to recognise the orders of architecture, for example, gives people a real thrill in actually kind of understanding their environment a little bit more and understanding the context of that environment and why something looks the way it does. And so I always say that art history, it's not in the, the classroom that it comes alive, it's, it's out there. So getting out there and seeing things is really, really vital. And we do encourage students to kind of get out there as much as we possibly can um, and to see things as much as they possibly can. And, that's a real kind of you know important factor of the course. Um, moving forward, what skills will I develop? And um, you can see here that obviously some of these things I've already touched upon, but I'll just run through what's on the slide and elaborate a little bit more with this. Obviously, the development of a skill to read and interpret visual images is key. Analyzing them in terms of context, content, um, materials etc. Um, the ability to look and dissect and analyse is a key skill of the course um, and it's something that is also transferable, you know, this is something that's not just unique to our history of course, we're doing it visually, but it's similar to what you might be doing in English for example in terms of taking apart um, one of the texts that you're kind of looking at, you know, understanding things, analysing things is what we kind of do and so teaching the skills to be able to do that effectively and objectively um, is really, really an important part of the course. Um, obviously, learning to write analytically, demonstrating evidence and substantiated knowledge. One of the things that the exam board is very, very keen on is that students utilise textbooks in the form of kind of quotes, maybe paraphrasing, um, to reference their arguments and to substantiate the arguments. And this is actually a key requirement of some of the essays that you'll be writing in art history. So one of the things that we'll be teaching you to do is to how to write substantiated arguments. We will be providing you with some texts, um, 
we provide you with lots of kind of photocopy material as well to enable to inform your reading and to come to lessons prepared also we're a great fan of what we call flipped learning here where we encourage you to come ready for discussion ready for sharing ideas and that's a really good key way of kind of upping your learning so preparing through the reading preparing for lessons through kind of engaging with resources and that's not just necessarily reading that might be kind of short videos um, we use a great website called smart history that's got lots of kind of little documentaries that are maybe about eight ten minutes long um, obviously kind of journals magazines articles films um, are all kind of part of the learning as well as obviously the first-hand experience that i've just mentioned in the previous slide key thing is it's there to obviously develop your visual skills but also develop your written skills but more than anything i like to say it's a skill for life in kind of art history Let's just nip on to the next slide there. Um, one of the kind of the key questions that I get asked um, about art history is where do kind of students end up? Why take kind of a subject in the visual arts in the first place? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is actually that history of art is a really highly regarded subject by many of the top universities and is welcomed by many degree course admissions tutors. Um, Cambridge, which is also on our doorstep, um, love art history students because they believe they come with some really, really strong written skills. So this is a really valuable humanities essay based subject. It's certainly up there with English or history in terms of the skills that it kind of gives you um, and in terms of the kind of the challenge that it presents as well. I should just note that you are not expected to come with any prior knowledge to art history. We do take you right from scratch and start right at the beginning. So there's no pre-required knowledge um, before joining the course. And what we're looking for is good written skills. So we'll be looking for the equivalent of a kind of you know, a B grade at kind of GCSE. Um, we're looking for kind of good, strong kind of communication skills and kind of obviously English. Um, history is another good one that you might kind of have under your belt, which generally gives a good criteria. But to be honest with you, you get um, students who come from all manner of different backgrounds to be an art history student. There's no kind of, you know, real pattern. Obviously, it complements art and design A level particularly well. Um, we do get a lot of art and design students who kind of do art, a history of art also, but not necessarily. We also get a lot of students who are maybe even doing the sciences or doing something completely different in terms of package. Um, so there's not necessarily one particular kind of one size fits all in terms of the choice of A-levels that you might kind of take. It also complements A-levels and other A-levels very well. Um, also, you know, people might be taking kind of classics, they might take English, they might take history alongside history of art. But like I said, it could be a complete diverse range of subjects also. And like I say, we're just looking for kind of good written skills at GCSE or evidence of written skills to kind of come on the score. So obviously a love of art, you know, that you enjoy looking at art. And particularly that you want to kind of find out more about it and you particularly enjoy the kind of analysis of art as opposed to kind of making it and i should emphasize that there is no making of art in the history of art it is purely an essay based subject so you don't have to kind of show any kind of you know drawings or a portfolio or anything like that it's completely separate a level to the art and design in its own right um i've come away from my original point there which was to kind of just say well where do students go um, who have done history of art and I think that it enables students to kind of pursue a whole range of options and I think if you just reflect on how big the museum and gallery sector is first and foremost that's a huge area you just have to think of an organization like the National Trust or English Heritage there's a massive opportunity to kind of work in museums and galleries and of course many students do go on and do that you kind of take degrees in art history and then maybe further degrees in things like conservation or curatorship. So that's a, a more direct kind of um, route that students might go, but obviously it gives you the foundation skills or transferable skills for a whole range of kind of careers. And that might be as diverse as kind of journalism, academia, obviously art and design, people who are maybe going into kind of careers in some aspect of art and design, be it kind of archeology, span um, photography, or fine art or anything along those lines. But also, as our kind of studi um, student Cassie will tell you, uh, she's going to study law 
Um, and we'll talk to you maybe a little bit about how art history has kind of helped her in preparing for that. So there's no, again, golden set rule about where students might go and where students kind of might end up there. But I do kind of emphasise it's highly regarded A-level and a great humanities one to study. And as, as I say, a very kind of rare opportunity to kind of, you know, study history of art as well. So bear that in mind. Um, let's just move on my slides. I'm just keeping a close eye on time here. There's a little bit more information um, about where students might end up. And this is a great slide just that promotes the idea of creative futures. And it talks about the kind of the value of the creative arts and the creative industries um, and just the sheer breadth of that kind of world and any visual education is going to be a great stepping stone into that visual world and history of art certainly gives you that strong visual education um, and like it says down here there's all manner of kind of uh, careers that are kind of associated with this and that's something that you might want to kind of look at there so bear that in mind okay Fantastic. So I'm just going to come on to the frequently asked questions. Now, I'm, I'm very keen for you to ask questions. Do kind of post any questions that you might have, um, and I'll do my best to answer. And like I said before, don't become shy with this. Even if you feel that I've already answered something, if you want a bit more detail on any element of what I've asked, then please do kind of come in and, um, and do that. So that's going to be kind of a really important there. Um, as I say, I'm shortly going to ask Cassia to talk to you as well and give her the, the student perspective, which I think is going to be really good. She's appeared again on the bottom of the screen, so I'll be passing over to her shortly. But um, I've just put up a couple of quick kind of questions here that are ones I generally get asked on open evening when people come around to kind of history of art. Um, I may already have already answered some of these within the duration of the talk as it stands. So. First question, what do I need to know or be able to do before taking the subject? Well, as I said, there's no prior knowledge needed for history of art. You should probably enjoy art and enjoy visiting galleries, um, but have that kind of keen interest in trying to find out more about why artists do what they do, why they produce what they do, um, and have a keen kind of interest in learning more about that. And it might be that, particularly if you're an art and design student at GCC, it might be that you kind of enjoyed that aspect of the course, that you did quite a bit of writing and you delved into kind of what artists were doing. And that is kind of, you know, a kind of key, might be, it might be an indication that art history might be something that you kind of enjoy a lot there. Um, fantastic, we've had our first question. I will come to the question shortly, but just keep posting the questions, please. That'll be really fantastic. What characteristics do I need to have to do well in history of art? Enjoy writing. Um, as I said, there's no way around this. You've got to be able to write to do history of art. But the course, I will encourage you by saying it does teach you these analytic skills and these written skills. I'm a great fan of kind of scaffolding, essentially. And that's kind of going to be really key. OK, so don't let kind of writing put you off. Obviously, you've got to be aware that there is a lot of writing in terms of art history. There's two three hour exams and they're all written exams. There's no coursework, unfortunately. But, you know, you will build up the confidence over the two years to be able to tackle both short answer and long answer questions. Okay, what learning teaching style will be used? We use all kinds of manner. Um, the one of the things that we try and avoid um, most of the time is trying to just lecture you. So you're not coming on to kind of art history lectures. I'm a big fan of what we call active learning in history of art. And therefore there's an opportunity for you to kind of join in, express your opinion. There's whole class work as well as kind of group work. Obviously working online as well. Um, is a kind of key thing of kind of building your confidence and getting the most out of this. I'm a great kind of fan also of you reflecting on just how you learn as well um, in terms of kind of not just art historians, but kind of young students. So there's a whole range of teaching styles and techniques that I will be using with you to get the best out of you. Facilities, we have got state-of-the-art HD projector, and in the process actually of replacing this hopefully very soon. Um, so we have a newer kind of system in there. Um, we've also got a lot of online resources as well. So we have what's called a SharePoint site, where all the kind of the PowerPoints, some of them narrated, go online. 
Um, there's a lot of kind of college facilities like we mentioned, click view, which is kind of video archive also. We're also currently using the Teams to kind of post, have discussions and use the online teaching capacity as well as the library that includes a large range of texts and materials for you. Um, I'm very conscious of the time and um, I'll just kind of end with a couple more slides here. Art history is a wonderful subject. This was from Marissa, this was a, a student um, a few years back and she actually went on to kind of do a master's degree in kind of art conservation. Um, she then kind of went off to kind of work for an artist in London in actual fact. But um, what's quite interesting is how she kind of came to Hills and didn't realise that actually history of art was a thing that she was going to do. And I love that kind of moment where students actually kind of really have that realisation that art history is a subject they want to do um, and they've discovered it here. And this is the chance to discover it. There's a little bit of information about student performance there, um, which just talks about our, our grades from kind of last year. You can kind of go back and have a look at those, but obviously you see we're kind of, you know, above the kind of national average last year um, in terms of our kind of A star to B, and students typically achieve very well in kind of history of art. So if that's something that kind of interests you, you can study those more. There's also a little bit about student destinations here. Um, or what students do take at university. But I think I've already spoken quite a bit about that already, so I'm keen not to kind of dwell too much on it. Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, rather than me kind of going on, um, I'm going to introduce you again to Cassia, who's one of our Year 13 students, and she's going to talk to you a little bit about what it's like being an art historian at Hills Road and a bit about her background as well. So, Cassia, take it away. So, hi. Um, so I decided to do history of art because I'd never really done anything like directly creative before. I didn't do art at GCSE. I did religious studies. But I really enjoyed the kind of religious art aspect of religious studies. So I decided that I would choose history of art because I thought maybe you just analyze some painting, paintings, but really you're going through, you're learning history through the medium of art. So you're doing a lot of history and you're doing it by art, but it kind of comes as one. So you're not just looking at paintings, for example, you're analysing them and you're analysing themes within them and you're analysing parts of history within them. So that's kind of why I really wanted to do it. And um, basically just to be prepared to do a lot of reading because it's good and you kind of have to know what you're talking about first to interpret it and to interpret it you have to really understand what the artist was trying to kind of say so um yeah that's kind of my kind of advice what made you Kessa, i'm just going to come in there what, what made you choose history of art again i don't know if you, you mentioned that just then but did you was it something you knew you wanted to do before coming to Hill's Road, or was it something you, could, you could even do before i applied so when I saw it and I knew that I'd enjoyed kind of art within another subject at GCC, I thought, well, that sounds like something that I would like, I would enjoy. And because I think it was different, the fact that it's different to anything else that you would ever do, I think that makes it in some sense kind of easier to ease into it. The fact that you don't know anything about it straight away, mm -hmm. you're learning afresh. So everything you learn is new to you. And I think that in a strange way, kind of makes it easier to settle into the subject. And, and could you say maybe a little bit about where you're going or planning to go and how maybe history of arts kind of helped with that, maybe? Yeah, so I also do philosophy and English. So I think kind of doing history of art alongside them has also like applied the skills you learn with sources and interpretation and analysis. It's helped me choose law. And obviously with law, it's a lot of interpretation and and like analysing sources and a analysing things in general. So I think the skills that you learn from there, they do really open up any sort of career pathway or avenue. It's very diverse. It isn't just going into art again or very strict. You can apply your skills that you learn within that to anything. So that's kind of my wow. Okay, no, that's, that's absolutely fine. And I like that kind of diversity that you can actually kind of, you know, because I think that's something that kind of puzzles people quite a lot in terms of what you can do. And actually, 
that idea of transferable skills, as you mentioned, the kind of idea that you can just kind of analyze. Yeah. So I say that again. I just say it's definitely not a rigid subject. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No, it's it's a really important thing to note there. Um, could you describe maybe for me just what your typical experience of lessons are, what we do, anything like that? So mostly in lessons, depending on what theme or the type of subject you're going through at in that term. So this term we're doing styles, we're doing stylistic features. So for example, we'll come in and you'll have some handouts and you'll begin looking at the art and you'll start looking at the sources that you have and how each piece of art right now refers to a stylistic feature. So for example, Art Nouveau or arts and crafts and things like that. So it's a lot of like re I can't mean the word. It's like referring back. It's a lot of like referring back to the text and painting. So making links between a style and a painting and how the features counteract counteract and influence each other while also looking at the context of an artist. So in lessons mostly a lot of discussion as well. We have a lot of discussion so that's like Tim was saying earlier, um, you come prepared for the lesson, so you know what you're going to say when we have an open discussion. And that's kind of how you begin to like learn the certain aspects within the themes. Yeah, and I think it's that thing, the discussion is very much encouraged within the kind of lessons. Um, and as Cassie was just saying, they've been just recently, or just finished recently, looking at stylistic characteristics of some of the key movements we're looking at in more depth than the kind of 19th century unit um, of work. So that's kind of, um, you know, a key kind of factor in terms of just how we learn. Um, and as I said before, I'm really kind of keen to develop your learning skills. Um, and that might be done through obviously kind of testing class and quizzes, giving each other one minute lectures, for example, learning through group work, peer marking, discussion as we've mentioned there's a whole variety of kind of ways in which we kind of you know want to improve our, our knowledge and you'll certainly learn a lot in art history I think that's true to say isn't it Cassie yeah that is very true okay, okay um thank you Cassia and maybe you just stay around for answering yeah. questions I did see questions pop up on the um the Q&A there um I'm just kind of wondering um, where they are because they've vanished on my end. Aha, here we are. I think we've got some questions there. Okay, so I've got kind of three questions so far. And again, if you've got any further questions, please do kind of post them. Um, we're very keen to kind of answer them and, and hopefully, you know, to give you a bit more of a better decision making process, really. You go in more informed about the subject and what it can offer. So um, I'm going down, I've got Abigail. Um, what are the courses complement history of art? Um, Cassie, do you have any viewpoint on that? Um, I really don't think, well, a lot, I, I mean, any, honestly, any, because history of art is so different that just yeah. in itself, I don't think you need anything else to kind of complement or help you. It's so like diverse and wide and unique that you don't need anything specifically but I would say well for me I I do two other English based courses so philosophy and English so it, English is obviously quite an obvious one but really any so if, if you want to do it but you also want to do physics or maths for example it's not gonna you know you're getting that wider view anyway so it's not going to affect your other subjects that much I mean, we do get that. We do get people doing kind of diverse things like physics, biology, and, and art history. So we do get some of those. I mean, they're obviously slightly more unusual, um, but it just just goes to show that you know there are things that go with it. And the things that more commonly you get patterns that students would do. Obviously, art and design and history of art go together well, or photography and history of art maybe. Um, if you're not interested in kind of the more, in, in, if you're interested in the photographic media. Um, and but then obviously as Cassie just said subjects that are essay based can help and complement the skills that you'll learn in history of art as well so like English philosophy psychology history might all be subjects that you you might consider in relationship to history of art but like I say there's no real kind of pattern and I think that if you're after an essay subject in a portfolio where the other two are maybe 
non-essay based subjects, but you really have a love of art and you really want to kind of develop your understanding of art, then this certainly could be a subject to look for in that way. Um, Morgan's coming with a question about how much classical art is in the course? Right, um, it's an interesting one, that one, because um, we do look at classical art and we particularly look at it in terms of architecture. Um, so in the first year, when we do the visual analysis and interpretation, we will look at um, Greek and Roman kind of architecture. Um, and later on in the course, we certainly revisit the kind of the classical ethos particularly when we look at things like neoclassicism um, in the 18th and 19th centuries as well. So whilst we don't specialise too much in kind of classical art, we certainly do cover um, elements of it and probably more so kind of architecture, I would say, um, more than kind of sculpture um, there, although we do reference it as we go through. So I hope that answers your question there. Are there any other questions that anybody wants to ask? Um, I think we did have a third question, but it seems to have disappeared. I think it was to do with student numbers on the course. And again, that's quite a typical one. We tend to, we've only got one group of art historians in both the lower sixth and the upper sixth, but they tend to be full groups. So we tend to have a full complement of about 22, 23 students doing the subject. Um, so that's something which um, is, has been quite typical for the last few years, we had a slight dip in numbers when the history of our A-level was nearly cancelled, which was obviously nearly a tragedy, but luckily it was rescued and brought back by Edexcel, which is the syllabus that we look at now. And if you want to know more a bit about the course or a lot more detail, I do encourage you to go to the Edexcel website um, where um, you'll be able to kind of select history of art. You can look at kind of sample work, you can look at the specification in more details, um, and get a bit of a, a more focused idea about what we, we study on the course. Um, we've got about four minutes left until the end of our session. Um, so if there's any last minute questions, do kind of post them. I think we've covered most of what we want to say at this stage. We've kind of gone through um, a lot, hopefully, that's, that's very, very useful for you. But as I say, um, if you want to kind of contact me directly, please email me at Hills Road. Um, I'm the head of art, so you can come through onto the website and you can kind of, you know, you can find me. My email address is twin at hillsroad.ac.uk and I'm happy to kind of answer any questions for you, okay? Um, I think that is all from us today. So I just want to kind of quickly thank Cassia, um, my student, for coming on board and helping me with this presentation. Um, as I said, don't forget you can watch this session again if you want to. But thanks very, very much for coming along. I really hope that was helpful and it was really good to kind of um, to meet you all tonight. Best of luck with your GCSEs and your choices. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.